Ixia, a leader in performance analysis solutions, presents the IX Network video tutorial series. IX Network is Ixia's flagship software application for testing the network infrastructure, including all devices like routers, switches, network access controllers, broadband access, carrier Ethernet, and data center Ethernet. It's used by professionals around the world, including development and system test engineers, network design and support engineers, and even marketing and sales to demonstrate product capabilities and performance. This video tutorial is brought to you by the IX Network product management team. In this IX Network video tutorial, we're going to take a detailed look at the Port Manager. Port Manager is the starting point of the IX Network application. We've broken this video into chapters, and in chapter one, we're going to cover the Port Manager basics connecting to an Ixia chassis, reserving ports, using offline ports, how to remap ports, and clearing port ownership. In chapter two, we're going to take a look at the grid operations. These are powerful features to help you configure large-scale tests. So we'll look at grid operations, grid sorting, grouping, and creating custom grid views. Chapter 3, we're going to look at the advanced features of the port manager, including port mapping, loading of saved configurations, some of the right-click options, the default versus pull-only option, and the chassis summary. In Chapter 1, we're going to cover the port manager basics. When you first launch the IX network application, you'll see this screen. To start with, on the left hand side, you see the main application navigation buttons. To start with, we're in the test configuration view. In the test configuration view, the first step is the port manager. We're currently in the port manager view, and I can see I have no ports in the current view. So to add ports, I click on the add ports button on the toolbar. This brings up the port selection dialog. In this dialog, I click on the green plus first to add a, a chassis. This is the Ixia chassis to connect to. So I type the IP address or the name of the chassis if I'm using DNS. So I have my IP address typed in. I click OK. At this point, the application connects to the chassis. And as soon as it does, I'll see the ports available. So I see this particular chassis has two Ixia ports or cards in it. I can also see the IXOS version on this particular Ixia chassis. So I can reserve on a per card basis, which will reserve all the ports, but we reserve all, uh, all our Ixia cards reserve on a per port basis. So as I expand the card, I can see that I have several ports with a green icon and several ports with an X style green icon. The X style green icon, our ports are already reserved. In this particular test, I'm going to reserve ports 3 through 6. So I can do a shift select or control select when selecting ports. And then I click on this button here and select add, assign, and add new ports. That moves those ports over into the port, uh, ports and test configuration. And I select OK. And at this point, the ports are initialized for use. So the ports are reset. They do physically go down, come back up within a few seconds. And I can see my state is green, which is good. So the next step here in terms of test would be to move on and configure your protocols and, or traffic. Since we're focused on the port manager, we're going to also look at using offline ports. So another option in the Add Ports dialog is to, instead of selecting physical ports on a module on a chassis, I can click on the button on the right-hand side to click and add offline ports. When I click and add offline ports, it asks me how many ports. So I'm going to add two more ports that are offline and the type of Ethernet ports. So I can see all the various types of ports here. And there's different reasons to use offline ports. The most common is you don't have access to ports currently in a chassis, but you want to go forward with, with building your configuration. So you can add offline ports, build your configuration, and then take those ports online. So I'm going to add offline ports here. I click OK. I select OK again. And I now have offline ports that are available in my test configuration. I just can't start any protocols or traffic on those ports. Now let's say I want to take those offline ports and assign them. So this is called port mapping. 
So what I can what I can do is I click the add ports again. And now I expand one of the cards. And I'm going to grab ports 6 and 7, so I do a shift select. And in this dialog here I take my offline ports and I can do a shift select. And now when I use this button here, I can say add two selected ports or add two remaining ports. In this case, both do the same thing. I add to the selected ports and then I bring those offline ports online where they're actually assigned to a chassis. So one last step here in the port manager basics is clearing port ownership. So a common issue you have here with cards in, their sh in shared labs is when you go to reserve a port that you should have access to, someone else has the port. And you see this with the, the green X through the uh, port icon there. And so as I scroll over, I can see the owner list here, and I can float over and see who the owner is. And in this case, I know that that owner is not supposed to have those ports right now, and I have the ability to uh, kick them off. So I can do a shift select on ports one and two. I can right click, and we have an option to clear ownership. You definitely want to make sure that you're communicating with other members of your team or anyone before you, you do clear their ownership, because you will disrupt the, the test they have in progress if they are running a test. So by clearing ownership, I get asked if I'm sure I want to do that. I click yes. I've now cleared those owner, that ownership and I can take these ports and add them to my test configuration and select OK. Once again those two ports are initialized and prepared for use and they're now live and connected. So we've covered the port manager basics connecting to a chassis reserving ports, using offline ports, and then actually mapping those offline ports to online ports, and finally clearing the port ownership. In Chapter 2, we're going to cover the grid operations. A new port manager grid was introduced in IX Network version 5.40. It exposes all the Layer 1 parameters, so you don't need to go into the Layer 1 configuration for each port, which is very useful when configuring a large port scale test. In the default view, we have the ports and chassis summary view on top, and the general tab, Ethernet tab, and custom view tab on the bottom. Looking at the default columns exposed, we first have the state. We can currently see that the state is green for all the ports in this test, which means they're available and up. If the icon was red, that would mean the link is down. If it's a clear circle with a red X through it, that would mean the port is not available. If it's a red icon with an X through it, the port CPU is not ready. And finally, if it's red with an excla exclamation point over it, there's a version mismatch with the IXOS. Next we have the name column. In the name column, the default name is the chassis IP, followed by the load module number and the port number and the port type, in this case Ethernet. Since I added my ports out of order, I can see the port names are out of order. So I can use a, a grid operation to fix this. And I can right click on the column and say sort ascending. Now I have my ports in order. I can also click in here and edit to provide a, a user configured name if I like to. Next is connection status. I am currently online and connected to these ports. Loopback. If I enable loopback, we loop our transmit back to our receive. So if you're trying to troubleshoot and you want to see what is actually coming out of the ports and capture, you can enable loopback. Transmit clocking and trans transmit gap mode are not used for Ethernet, so in this case I can customize my view by right clicking and saying column chooser. And actually removing those from the grid. Next is on the receive mode, we have two different modes, either capture or capture and measure. Legacy cards, when put in a capture mode, couldn't make measurements concurrently. 
All the new, newer series of cards can do capture and measure, so it's recommended to leave it in the capture and measure mode. For transmit mode, you have interleaved or sequential. When doing sequential, we actually are in the packet stream mode, and you could result in inadvertently having bursty traffic. Enabling the default, which is interleaved, uses our advanced scheduler mode and will prevent uh, inadvertent uh, bursty traffic. Next is all these ports are Ethernet, and all these ports are currently assigned to the ports that I have uh, in this test. Next, I'll switch over to the Ethernet tab, and we expose all the common layer 1 parameters, like speed and duplex. In this case, I can see all my ports have auto-negotiate enabled. If I wanted to disable auto-negotiate, I can uncheck individual ports, or I can do a shift select or a control select on many different ports, right click, and I have a right click grid option, and I can select enable or disable. Also, since I've unchecked the first one, if I click same, it will make all of them the same. So in this case, I've just disabled auto negotiate. Starting in 540, when you change the layer one configuration options that they do not apply right away. You have this red star on the in the grid indicating a change has been made. If you want the change to take effect, you have to click the apply button. In this case, I'd like to leave my ports with auto, -neg auto negotiation enabled. So we have this new feature called undo. So I can actually undo the grid operations I did, removing those changes. Same goes for the medium mode copper. I can do grid operations to very quickly change them all to fiber. I can change individual ones, do the same. Also, for port manager properties, there are some settings in the, in the settings uh, default option menu. In this option menu, you can come in and select default parameters, like if you're always using fiber, you can set your media mode to fiber, and when you reserve ports, it will always automatically put them in fiber mode. This will prevent you from having to do it every time in a test to change that configuration. So next, let's look at the Custom View tab. When I click on the Custom View tab, it presents me with the, the Column Chooser menu. And in this case, the visible default columns are Type, Name, and State. Let's just say I want to build a very simple view with Type, Name, State, and the speed of the Ethernet port. I can just add that column, select OK, and I very quickly built a custom view, and you can customize this for any purpose you may have. The last thing I'd like to show you is the grid grouping feature. The grid grouping feature is exposed in the upper left hand corner here. By right clicking on this corner, you see the options. I can group by type. In this case, I have all Ethernet. You can group by name, if I, I did a naming convention, or group by state. And state's actually quite useful in a large port scale test because I may want to see how many ports are up and how many ports are down. So if I had several hundred ports, I wanted to see how many ports were down, I can group by the state and very quickly see the list of ports that are down. In Chapter 3, we're going to look at the Port Manager Advanced Functions. So first, let's look at port mapping. So currently, I have eight ports reserved. First of all, let's take a look at how we would delete ports. So for example, if I don't need ports 5 through 8, I can do a Shift Select, highlight those ports, and select the red X. This will delete the ports from my configuration. Now let's say I have ports 1 through 4 in this test, but instead of assigning them to 1 through 4 in this load module, I need to connect to other ports connecting to a different DUT. So I can actually select these ports and release them. This releases the ownership of those ports and take these, these become offline ports. I then select Add Ports. And I can expand card 1 and select 5 through 8, for example. 
and I can say assign to selected ports. Do, to do the assign to selected ports, you want to select the ports first, and then select assign to selected ports. I select OK. So now I've just reassigned these ports in my configuration. I've taken them offline, and I then reassign them to ports 5 through 8 in this test. Now, they're still released, so to actually connect them, I select the Connect All button. Connecting them will actually reserve the ports and bring those ports up for the ability to use in the test. The same capability is available when you load saved configurations. If I save this configuration right now, associated with this config are these specific ports and this ownership. So if I were to save this and close it and reopen it, these same ports would be, they would attempt to be reserved. If they can't be reserved, the ports would stay offline and I would have to assign them. So some reasons, for some reasons uh, you can't actually get the ports you need is maybe the chassis is not up and available, maybe the ports are reserved by another user, and you need to look at your port manager and determine which ports you can assign for use in that test but you have the ability to remap them. Next, let's look, look at the right-click options. The right-click options expose uh, a lot of powerful options for managing your ports. First of all, similar to the buttons on the toolbar, you still have your unassigned and assigned ports. You can release selected. We have the ability to import a .crd or .prt file. This will actually load a config file that you may have used in IX Explorer. From this dialog, you can also start capture. In this case, you would have to enable the capture on the port. You can start and stop capture. Next is, if you've changed your port options and you want to just restore the factory defaults, you can come in and select set factory defaults. Another useful option, especially in the routing tests, is after a lot of working with protocols, uh, there it could you could become in a situation where the port is not behaving like you would expect. One option is to come in and reboot the port CPU or reboot the port CPU and change to your factory defaults right from this menu. A very common option for testing and troubleshooting is you can simulate link up and link down. So all my links are currently up but on this port if I choose to simulate link down I, I can actually bring my port link state down and this will bring it down on the dot as well so I can actually look at the dot and determine which port just went down and I can confirm I'm actually connected to the right port. If I right click again I say simulate link up and we'll come back to an up state. Lastly is in the right click option you still have the ability to go into the layer 1 config menu. Now in the new port manager introduced in 5.40, all of these options are currently exposed in the grid, so you don't have to go into this layer one dialog to configure your, your port parameters. Let's look at a few more advanced options before we conclude this video tutorial. In the add ports dialog, when you're selecting ports, one option that you have is you can right click and perform operations like assign a new. Also there's options for delete chassis and refresh chassis. Let's say you don't want to connect to this particular chassis. You can actually click, click on this and delete this chassis and select another one. You can also view the, cha the chassis properties through this menu. In the chassis properties you actually get a detailed view of the IXOS version, its IP address, and the role in the chassis chain. Another advanced option exposed in this menu is when I add a port, I actually have a right-click option in, in the port config view where there is an option to do set action. Set action is not widely used, but you have the option to choose default or pull only. The default action will connect and reserve the port. The pull only mode will actually just connect to the port, reserves it, but won't configure the layer 1 parameters. 
it will just pull only. So for example, if you configured your ports with a script and you want to just pull only instead of connecting and rebooting the port CPU, you can use that option. Once again, it's not a very commonly used option. The last thing to cover here in this video tutorial is the chassis summary. In the chassis summary, you can see all the chassis that you're connected to. In this case, I'm connected to a single chassis, but in some tests, you're required to use ports off multiple chassis. If you are, you're required to connect them via the backplane so that you have a common clock reference. In that configuration, one chassis will become the master, and other chassis will become the slave to that chassis. So in this view, you can come in and verify which chassis is the master and which chassis are the slave to that master. So this concludes the IX Network Port Manager video tutorial. Thank you and stay tuned for more upcoming advanced topics. For more information on IX Network, check out www.ixiacom.com. Thank you for your time and interest from the IX Network Product Management Team.